All right, let's go ahead and get started with this next lecture video on exo and endothermic reactions. Now, in the course of this lecture, we're going to really um, get into enthalpy a lot more, um, understanding enthalpy in uh, the relationship to heat energy that it has, and and, and being able to classify uh, the a chemical reaction or even a physical process that relates to the um, enthalpy changes or energy or uh, heat of energy changes itself. All right, so let's look at this um, really closely. And and if you need to re look at this video a couple of times and do so, but you got to nail down exothermic and endothermic reactions and what they really truly mean in terms of enthalpy changes. All right, so here we go. Um, during a chemical reaction, energy is required to break chemical bonds in the reactants. So energy required to break chemical bonds. And energy is released when new bonds are formed in the products. So energy is released when new bonds are formed. So uh, essentially, we it requires energy to break a chemical bond, and energy is released when um, new bonds are formed. As a result of bond breaking and bond forming, there's going to be a change in potential energy content or the enthalpy of the system. Right. So no matter what. During the course of a chemical reaction, when we break and we make new bonds, it's going to result in a change in the overall potential energy, or the um, enthalpy of the system if it's under constant pressure. Now the enthalpy change, which is delta H, depends if the bonds in the products are stronger than the bonds in the reactants. And so this is pretty important, this last one. The enthalpy change depends if the bonds in the products are stronger than the bonds in the reactants. So if you recall, the stronger the, int the stronger the bonds, which means the stronger the electrostatic attractions, the lower the potential energy. All right? The weaker the bond, the higher the potential energy. And so we want strong bonds, low potential energy to create a stable state. And, and that's what you got to walk away with understanding all of this. All right, so let's get into um, it, the classification of endo and exothermic reactions here. All right, this is the way to look at an exothermic reaction. A reaction is exothermic if the energy needed to break bonds is less than the energy uh, released when new bonds are formed. This means really that more energy is released than is needed. All right. Um, this excess energy is going to go in the surrounding environment as heat energy. All right. So, um, in other words, th there's going to be a, a loss of heat energy from the system. And it's going to go into the surrounding environment, all right? So heat energy will be transferred to the surroundings. This happens because the bonds within the reactant particles are weaker, meaning that they have higher potential energy level. So in other words, we're going to start out with the reactants at a higher potential energy state because they have weaker bonds than the bonds within the products. So exothermic reactions result in producing more stable, uh, or I, I guess you could say exothermic reactions result in products being more stable than reactants will be, and there will be an increase in temperature of the surroundings. So I would say that this one right here, this statement is uh, pretty critical. Uh, to highlight and note, okay? So, honestly then, if, we're, if the 
uh, reactant bonds are weaker, they have higher potential energy. And so those bonds are going to be broken, and then new bonds are going to be made to create the product. And the product bonds are going to be stronger, so therefore they have less potential energy in creating a more stable system overall. All right. So exothermic reactions are pretty highly favorable in nature. And we come across exothermic reactions quite a bit because they do create stronger bonds in the products or a more stable system. All right, now let's look at endothermic reactions. A reaction is endothermic if the energy needed to break bonds is greater than the energy released when new bonds are formed. This simply means um, that heat energy is absorbed by the system from the surroundings. All right, so we actually need to absorb more energy than what we get out. All right, this happens because the bonds within the reactant particles are stronger, lower potential energy level than the bonds within the products. Okay, so look at it this way. Um, the reactants already have a low potential energy state. They already have very strong bonds. So in order to break those bonds so that we can um, separate the, the particles, it requires a lot of energy to do so. And so we have to go from a low potential energy state to a higher potential energy state to create the, the products because the products then are going to have weaker bonds or higher potential energy in an endothermic reaction. Therefore, endothermic reactions result in products being less stable than the reactants, and there will be a decrease in temperature in the surrounding environment. So endothermic reactions are not very favorable because we go from already a stable state of low potential energy to a state of higher potential energy um, which is of course less stable in the system so in order to do these or to even make this um, these endothermic reactions work it requires a tremendous amount of energy being absorbed by the surrounding environment all right all right so now let's do an experiment here all right, so I have two beakers, uh, or one beaker here, um, and, and this first beaker on the left-hand side is going to represent the reactants, and the beaker on the right-hand side is going to represent the, the products. And so we have a beaker, and we have a thermometer that's inserted in the beaker. Um, and so, let's see here, let's uh, do this, let's label um, reactants over here. And over here is going to be the products. They're in the beaker. All right. Now, you must make note of this. This is really important. The beaker and the thermometer are not part of the system. The thermometer and the beaker are actually part of the surroundings. The system is the reactants or the products, all right? And so, in fact, is the thermometer is never part of a system when it comes to a chemical reaction. And so the thermometer is actually going to be measuring the average kinetic energy of the surroundings, not the average kinetic energy of the reactants. That's very important to understand. Again, one more time. The thermometer measures the um, average kinetic energy of the surrounding environment, okay? So we have our reactants. It's inside of the beaker, and we measure the initial temperature of the surrounding environment. And let's say that the initial temperature goes up, and so it measures, let's say... Um, 25 degrees C. All right? That's before the reaction even occurs. All right? 
Now, the reaction begins to go, and um, the products begin to be formed, and after the reaction, we measure the temperature. So the reaction, uh, uh, the reaction, after the reaction, the temperature is measured, and it's going to say, say, um, 95 degrees C, all right? So what's occurred in this reaction? Um, was this reaction an endothermic or an exothermic reaction? Well, it really depends on looking at the temperature here. Now remember, the temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy. Uh, so what, what, is look, what we're looking at here is that the surrounding environment has actually gained energy, right? It's gone from 25 degrees C to 95 degrees C. Now this tells us then that the reactants um, had to lose energy, heat energy. So the reactants had to lose heat energy to the um, surroundings. And the surroundings had to gain that amount of heat energy. So this reaction has to be exothermic. All right? Because in an exothermic reaction, exothermic, the reactants lose energy to the surrounding environment, and the temperature of the surrounding environment should go up in all exothermic reactions. Had this been an endothermic reaction, we would have seen the opposite happen. The temperature should have dropped in the surrounding environment because energy had to go in from the surroundings to the reactants if it was an endothermic reaction. All right. So this experiment definitely uh, represents an exothermic reaction that's occurring here. So ultimately, the reactants um, are starting out at um, a very high potential energy, very high potential energy state, and so they have very weak um, bonds, and so those bonds, when they're broken, um, heat energy will be released to the surrounding environment, causing the temperature to go up, creating the products which are going to be at lower potential energy, and more stable or stronger bonds. Okay, so that's a, what's essentially happening in this reaction. To to make note of. All right, I know I know uh, time is going, but we there's still some important things we need to to look at. This is such an important concept, endo and exothermic. Okay, so to finish up here, we need to draw a couple of graphs. Some important um, diagrams that are called energy diagrams. We're going to first diagram um, an endothermic reaction and what it looks like. All right. So I need to draw some axes here. So I'm going to try to do straight lines. Right. It's important that you're able to do this as well. And on the X at, or the Y axis, I'm going to label H. H standing for enthalpy, okay, or the total potential energy that the system has, okay. Now, um, on the x axis, you can leave it blank if you want to, or you can actually write the duration of the reaction, and it doesn't matter. As long as you have the y axis labeled, you're in good shape, all right. So, during during a endothermic reaction, we're going to have a curve that looks something like this. All right, um, and let's label this. This is going to be the reactant level. And up here will be the products. Okay, so as the reaction goes on, we've we've gone from um, essentially low entropy, or sorry, enthalpy, low enthalpy to higher enthalpy. All right now, this 
line here is going to indicate the heat absorbed. during the reaction, okay? Um, so, this right here is the initial enthalpy. Okay, the initial enthalpy. All right, so as you can see from this, um, remember, enthalpy measures the um, total amount of potential energy that the system has. So this is what's going to occur. The reactants at low um, have low um, entropy, or sorry, low enthalpy. So that means that they're very strong bonds um, and very stable. So in order to break those bonds and to create products that are at higher enthalpy, heat is going to have to be absorbed. And then that heat energy is going to be changed into potential energy. Um, so this right here alright, so the energy difference between here is really the amount of heat energy absorbed which is equal to the enthalpy or the enthalpy of the system. All right, so that would be delta H. All right, so that is a endothermic reaction. So what about um, an exothermic. Okay, so let's diagram this. Uh, we need to label our axes. Again, on the y axis, we label H. On the x axis, you can leave blank or you can write duration of the reaction. And what's going to happen here is just the opposite. Okay, the reactants are starting out at higher potential energy. Okay, they're starting out at higher potential energy. And the products that will be made. are at a lower potential energy. So we're going from a high potential to a low potential energy. That has to be an exothermic reaction. So this is our initial um, enthalpy. Okay. Is our initial enthalpy line. That's where we're starting out at. And as you can see, that as the duration of the reaction occurs, the uh, potential energy change, um, we, we basically lose potential energy, which is represented by the difference in energy here. So the change in potential energy or the change in enthalpy is going to be negative and it should equal the amount of heat energy that is released which is represented by this line here is heat loss All right. so that's basically a diagram there so remember that you can think of it in this way that when an exothermic reaction occurs the reactants the the bonds are broken and heat energy is going to be, uh, our potential energy is going to change into heat energy, and heat energy is going to go out to the surrounding environment. And that lowers the overall potential energy because it's lost in the form of heat energy. 
during an endo or an exothermic reaction. All right. Well, our time is well over, so I'm sorry this was a longer video, but there was a lot of important things to look at here. So make sure you relook at this video. Um, take the time to study your notes very clearly on endo and exothermic processes. And that is it for now.